there's nothing there's nothing wrong in the sense that the task is not one that takes place in years or decades. It takes longer mm -hmm. uh, in terms of changing cultures or changing societies. And that you often have to retreat. There are times when, look at the United States. We feel we are moving in the wrong direction, some of us. Uh, I think a majority, but in the end, we didn't control the power. So that societies, there is an ebb and flow. The question is, are you creating students resilient enough to, to pursue the vision in all kinds of conditions? And I think EHU is succeeding. It is not going to change uh, Belarus quickly. Uh, it, and it's going to have to survive, and the vision is going to have to survive over a long period of time. So, so that part of what teaching an individual to challenge authority involves is to be persistent, to take a long-term view and not a short-term view. Everything is not going to change or be done in a short term. And if you are not capable of thinking in the long term, you will often learn, lose the long term because you make short-term decisions. So uh, that may be defensive <laughs> in the sense that uh, those of us who believe in liberal education, I think we're on the defensive. I don't think that we are the vanguard at the moment. I think that we're basically fighting what might be said a rear guard action. But I think it, we will persist. I think we will come back in that sense. Uh, and the values will, will eventually become more dominant in the society. Well, you layered a lot of questions in there. Uh, one is that it's not true that no one predicted. It's true that we did not predict. Those who have a different worldview than I have, who embrace values that I don't embrace, predicted what they, they had, they understood something we failed to understand. So part of what comes out of what we've been through is that somebody says that if you believe in the values of liberal education, you have to do a better job of it. You have to find a way of being more inclusive, more understanding, uh, more insightful in what is taking place, because we are the, we, in many ways, created what we deserve. It was our failings that created what we find an anathema. So it isn't, it, it, you know, the, the thing that in our election in the United States, it was, it was one of the most shocking things when I heard uh, Clinton say as a candidate, and she used, even in a private setting, the phrase deplorables. That is an ultimate failure of liberal education for her to think of those who opposed her in those terms. We have failed in our own education, so that I see what we're living with as a consequence of our own failures, and it's something from which we have to learn. If we learn from it, then you make a stronger view of education. But those who oppose you are not deplorable. Those who oppose you are driven by different values and circumstances that you have to understand how to solve in order to help them become the full beings that they want to be, just as you want to be your own. And that, you know, what we, what we failed in the United States, but I think this is true in a, in a much broader context in Europe and in the world, is that the incredible changes we're going through are, are incredibly anxiety producing. Uh, we were not sympathetic, empathetic enough to the dislocations they meant for people. Yes, globalization is good, but if it, if it loses your job, how do you help that person feel whole? How do you feel that person feel value if their world is being taken away from them? We didn't think that was important enough to spend the time on it. So I don't, uh, I don't see it as something out there, but rather as our own internal inadequacy, inadequacy of the education we were giving ourselves.